Welcome to part 2. So, what exactly did the ODM party mean in their scathing attack against the deputy president? That he has ulterior motives, that he has very evil motives concerning the future of the country. Especially because, according to the ODM officials, he is very determined to block the upcoming referendum. And clearly what the deputy president wants is to retain the status quo going into the 2022 presidential elections. What did they actually mean? Now, the truth is there is a very disturbing trend when it comes to presidential elections in Kenya. This particular trend can be clearly seen in all presidential elections that have ever been held in our country Kenya. And this trend is tribal. In 1992, there was a very strong anti kalenjin sentiment that hung like a dark cloud over those elections. Of course, Daniel Arap Moy was in power and he hailed from the Kalenjin community. What Moy handlers did to counter this was to make sure that the Kikui vote was split. Yeah? And then they also made sure that the union yeah, of the various communities, most notably the union between the Luo and the Kikuyu, was dismantled. This union was domiciled in the original Ford Party, Forum for Restoration of Democracy, which joined all communities together in that particular political party. But the two dominant tribes in that particular party were the Kikuyu and the Luo. According to keen political analysts of the time, including my late political lecturer, the glue that held those two communities together, and indeed the entire Ford party together, was a man called Masinde Muliro, who hailed from the Luya community, the Bukusu to be precise. Masinde Muliro was a very respected national leader. Yeah. He was amongst the nationalists who had gone to negotiate yeah, for Kenyan's independence constitution in London in the 60s. Now, Masinde Muliro died under very mysterious circumstances shortly after disembarking from a flight into the country. And shortly after he passed on, the mighty Ford crumbled, yeah, or rather it uh, exploded <laughs> into many different pieces, separate different pieces. One was Ford Kenya, yeah, dominated by the Luo community, and led by the late Jeramogi Oginga Odinga, Father Turaila. And of course the other faction was Ford Asili, led by the late Kenneth Matiba. And interestingly, Moi's attempt to split the Kikui vote did not quite work. Yeah, because the person who ended up getting the majority of votes from Central Kenya was Kenneth Matiba, rather than the more experienced, older, Mwai Kibaki of the Democratic Party. There is a fascinating aside here, because going forward, anybody who thinks they can split yeah, the Kikui vote <laughs> had better refer back to what happened in 1992. In my view, it is impossible, yeah, because political leaders can talk, but then the voters vote. And whatever you want to say about the House of Mumbi voters, <laughs> those Kenyans are smart. Not easily fooled, yeah, not easily herded into a compartment to vote blindly. Now in 1997, there was even a more disturbing yeah, cloud of tribalism that hung over those elections. You see, what happened is a man called Mwai Kibaki made significant inroads yeah, into the Rift Valley. And his timing was perfect, yeah, because at around that time, the Kalenjin community were getting totally and completely fed up with Daniel Arap Moy. And in any case, they knew that Moy was serving his last term in 1997 as president. And the wise and crafty tribal elders of the Kalenjin community knew that they would have to prepare the community for the future. And the future clearly looked like a Kikui presidency. This is what really favored uh, Mwai Kibaki as he made inroads into the Rift Valley. 
Now to counter this, <laughs> and this is very instructive even uh, when you want to talk about the tribal clashes that happened in 2007. To counter this, what Moy handlers did was to provoke in the Rift Valley yeah, unprecedented anti-Kikuyu sentiments. Now historically, during the Jomo Kenyatta days, what happened is that a lot of members of the House of Mumbi were resettled in the Rift Valley. Yeah. And this resettlement caused a lot of tensions in the Rift Valley in the 60s. And so all Moy handlers did was to cash in on this and remind the community what happened in the 60s and then tell them they do not want at all costs to even imagine a future presidency going to the House of Mumbi because those in the Rift Valley would be finished. Yeah, this is the rhetoric that was sold. And it worked like a charm. Yeah, because all those members of the Kalenjin community who were even booing the then president, Daniel Rapmoy, during political rallies, on voting day, they trooped to voting booths yeah, and did the unexpected. They voted for Moy almost to a man. In the 2002 presidential race, yeah, we had two members from the House of Mumbi being the front runners for the presidency. And the strategy used by Raila Odinga and company to win those elections for Moi Kibaki was to drum up anti kalenjin sentiments. This is what played a major role in tipping the scales yeah, so that the House of Mumbi voted for Mwai Kibaki rather than Uhuru Kenyatta. The same people who had voted emphatically for Kenneth Matiba in 1992 and ignored the more experienced Mwai Kibaki this time round did the opposite. Why? Because the candidate Uhuru Kenyatta then was too closely linked to the Kalenjin community. And uh, the rhetoric in that uh, particular election, presidential election, was very much anti the Kalenjin nation. Now in retrospect, we can clearly see this playing around and fiddling around with tribal emotions and tribally based emotions was playing with fire because everything exploded in the 2007 presidential elections. But it seems we didn't learn. Yeah, we never learned from history. And so in 2013, the dominant tribal emotion was anti Luo. And in 2017, we were very unlucky because we had both the anti Kikuyu yeah, sentiment and the anti Luo sentiment. And both were very strong. And so we can clearly see we have never had a presidential election in Kenya without tribal sentiments being drummed up yeah, by those candidates racing for state house. In other words, under the current constitution, yeah, and looking at things historically, it is impossible to win a presidential election in Kenya without drumming up ethnic tribal emotions. Yeah, and, the, and the more emotionally charged yeah, you get tribes and communities, the better your chances of making it to state house. That is what history clearly tells us. Now, the Building Bridges Initiative yeah, and the plan to have a referendum is mainly targeted at addressing this, tribal emotions during presidential elections. Because no tribal emotions during presidential elections, no tensions, therefore peaceful elections. It's as simple as that. And so what the ODM Brigade was saying about Deputy President William Ruto is that he does not want the situation to be changed because he has got no other way of campaigning for the presidency. That is putting it very bluntly. And that, I'm afraid, is also the reality. Because all indications are that the campaign strategy of Deputy President William Samuel Ruto in 2022 would involve drumming up yeah, Kikuyu tribal sentiments as well as Kalenjin tribal sentiments. The whole idea will be to make the Kalenjin community yeah, feel that they are finished, they are doomed if William Ruto does not ascend to the presidency and to make the House of Mumbi feel the same. And to do this successfully, of course, uh, anti luo sentiments must be drummed up. Laws will have to be made 
to look like the enemies so that people will feel that if a Luo president takes over, the Kalenjin community and the Kikuyu community would have a terrible time. They would be doomed. They would be finished. And I'm serious. Because these are the kind of emotions that come up during presidential elections. They may sound ridiculous now, and indeed they are utterly ridiculous. Yeah. However, when presidential elections come around and the tribal demons are reawakened, <laughs> you'll be shocked how many very highly educated, intelligent people start thinking in that direction. That is why we have already seen yeah, ideas being sold to us, actually being stuffed down our throats, yeah, about there being tensions in elections, because there are some certain people who never accept election results. By extension, there are certain communities, according to these people, who never accept presidential election results. And those are the people who bring tension to the country. Folks, that is the very terrible blueprint of winning a presidential election in Kenya. Thus far, nobody, yeah, nobody has tried to do it in a different way and won an election. Indeed, nobody has tried to do it in a different way and even, <laughs> and even ended up anywhere near the top two candidates when the election results come in. And I can give you very many examples. Martha Karua, Peter Kenneth, Msalia Mdavadi. All these people are the kind of characters who should have risen to national prominence and performed well, yeah, even if not won, but at least performed well in presidential elections in Kenya. However, the record is clearly there for all to see. And it clearly tells us that without drumming up tribal emotions, you're not serious about winning any presidential race in Kenya. Now, Peter Kenneth and even Martha Karua are politicians who were in the game long before William Ruto entered. The scene, yeah, even Musalim Davadi. However, Deputy President William Samoy Ruto came from nowhere, yeah, and became a very serious top national contender or top national influencer yeah, for the presidential elections by doing what? Drumming up and provoking ethnic and tribal emotions. Now we understand very clearly what ODM officials meant yeah, in the attack against the deputy president. And this is something that Kenyans need to think very deeply about. Because no matter how hard we try to turn our politics into issue-based politics rather than tribal politics, we must always continue to ask ourselves the question, what will happen when the presidential campaigns begin and the tribal demons reawaken? What will happen? Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.